Oh, I got to invite Jerry Fort. Ooh. Hello, folks. Tonight, we're looking at Bud Light and Clamato. We did Budweiser and Clamato. Um, we're going to do, hold on. I'm going to invite one more person. I forgot to invite him. I feel so terrible. Okay. He's probably saying, where's my invite? All right. Uh, now, I was hoping John sharing his own one would join us. He said he was going to do these, but he hasn't been able to yet. So he's been pretty busy. But anyway, uh, I am Louisiana Beer Reviews, Ronald or Jay. And then we have from Florida, Bill, from North Carolina, William, from California, Jose the Brew Dude. And um, we're looking at a beer that was introduced in 2008. I was talking on the phone to Paul, who used to join us all the time, but he said it was too hectic with all the children. And he was talking about these beers. He said he remembers going to a bar years ago, and they would order what they call bloody beers. And I said, bloody beers? I said, it's like a Bloody Mary beer. He said, yeah, it's the same type thing as a Bloody Mary. He said he found, he found that they tasted remarkably similar. And he said one night he went out and met some old guy from college, and they he drank four of them. And uh, <laughs> it probably wasn't 24, 25 ounces, but he said he felt pretty lit up. you know. But tonight we're doing a 4.2% item. And uh, who's never had it before? Me. Bill. William's not had it. The brood. I've never had a Bud Light, period. Of any sort. No, of any sort. So this will be my first foray into the Bud Light, which. Okay. Which what? Uh, I saw a statistic that that one out of every five beers sold in this country is a Bud Light, which is astonishing to me. Yeah, it's huge. And I just, and that figure is actually down from a few years ago because the craft beer has made an inroads. I think at one time it was a twenty-eight percent market share for Bud Light, which is, un I mean, that's incredible. Yeah, love it or hate it, I mean, you know, you got to give props to that. I mean, that type of domination is so un. Uh, you know, unheard of. It is. It's hard to explain. And then if you put Bud Light and Budweiser together and count them as a single brand, right? Two variants of the same brand, then it's even more incredible. Well, I guess we'll get started. Uh, we may have some people jumping in. Um, so, uh, who wants to go first? I'll grab. I'm grab mine out of the fridge freezer. All right. Since it's still afternoon, Brew Dude, you want to go first afternoon in your town? Yeah, yeah. I'm just going to pour that right now, and we'll kind of go on the appearance of it. Uh, All right. Just, just pouring it right now as, as you see what I'm doing. I'm getting a nice head on it. Very similar color that I was gaining with the Budweiser last week. That reddish, yeah. um, kind of pink-reddish color. Definitely a lot of sediment inside. The head is just dissipating as you see that it's happening right now. It, it was there and it's gone. And what it's leaving behind, it's leaving behind a lot of tomato pulp. Yeah. But Look at all the head I've got on mine. Pretty yeah, good, yeah. huh? It's going to yeah. fade, though. Everybody's getting the same thing, the S uh, code for St. Louis, I believe. Everybody's getting S. Yeah, I've got, I've got the S. Yep. I have How about an LG. You? I have an LG. Must be Los Angeles. <clears throat> I was thinking we might get somebody from New England joining us because there is an Anheuser Busch brewery in New England, I believe, is in Massachusetts. Uh, but I don't know if this is made there. This is probably only made at a few of the breweries because it's probably some complicated equipment they have to use, wouldn't you think? Yes. Uh, the uh, the brewery the brewery is the first letter of the second digit on these, and mine was uh, born on date was sixteen two seventy, which would be September the twenty sixth. So it's well, it's still within the date. It's not that 
fresh, but it's okay. Yeah, I think mine was pretty fresh. I have to go back and get my can. Uh, I was talking to a distributor, and he said by they're trying by January of next year, 2017, they want all the Anheuser Busch products to convert over to Best Buy dates instead of born on dates. Yeah, there, there, theirs is just it's it's haphazard right now. I've seen two two twelve packs of Bush Ice. They had different style dates on both six twelve packs. Yeah, they need to get their act together and do it all one way or all the other. So like, you gonna have the DH or not have it in baseball? They're trying to, you know, have their cake and eat it too right now. Just just get one and be done with it. <laughs> right, but they they said the goal is to get it all converted over to Best Buy dates by January because they said it was sort of irritating to have the born on date because they had to carry around this little book. And if it was such and such day, they'd look it up and it would tell them when it, how much time it had left on it. And it was just, so. it's better. It's better because you know when it was made, but they say it's irritating to keep up with when you need to pull it. But uh, anyway, so any other comments about the appearance of the brew dude? Um, just, that's really it. I mean, it's, I am getting some dark sediment inside. I, Almost like uh, Bill mentioned er the earlier, like pepper. I'm not sure if that's pepper or something, but it's very, very dark and almost black. Yeah, I'm my glass was nice and clean as well. I'm getting uh, that pinkish thing. Mine is pinker than yours, but I got different lighting, and I'm getting a lot of uh, residue around the edges, which is that tomato pulp, maybe some clam. But it looks like tomato pulp. <laughs> um, some clam. Um, William and Bill, I presume y'all getting a similar appearance. Uh -oh. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm. I'm kind of surprised, and maybe I just forgot from last week. But this this particular one, the Bud Light version, seems to be way more effervescent than the Bud. I mean, I got yeah. bubbles like crazy. I got a spew out of mine like a whale. Wow. Well, maybe rotated a little bit too vigorously, but mine had a. It was spewing out. <laughs> That's funny. So now, Bill, I mean, uh, William, you, if you do try a regular Bud Light one day, which has been on the market 34 years, I might add, yeah, I'd, yeah. Be, I'd be curious to see what you say about it. It's not like I haven't had an opportunity. <laughs> right. Well, you know, it's like if you've never seen the movie Cannonball Run, you'd probably survive not seeing it. But... Anyway, um, oh, hey. may as well get into the aroma. I guess it's going to be similar to last week, but it's going to be lighter, right? Ta -da, ta -da. Um, I'm getting used to these things. <laughs> <laughs> They're good, man. Um, the aroma, I'm getting a little different than last week for sure. I'll just a tie a tad bit where last week I felt that I smelled the beer a little bit more within the tomato juice this one it's almost like it's just tomato juice period yeah you know was it was it isn't the the bud the bud that i had last week was five percent yeah. this one this one's four i did i mean is that cutting things too fine or i kind of agree with jose here in, the, in that uh, last week I, I thought I smelled a little bit more of a beer aroma. Now I'm smelling a little more tomato. Well, it's a pretty, it's a light beer, so you're just going to have less beer relative <laughs> to the tomato, the clamato, right? I would be inclined myself. I'm just speaking as as me. I would prefer to have the the heavier bodied beer with this. In other words, the Budweiser as opposed to Bud Light. But you know how people love Bud Light, so they're going to put it out there. Uh, what do you? Let's talk about the aroma, I guess. And we're not going to see anything too greatly different from last week. But um, I'm getting that salty tomato juice, boy. <laughs> yeah, me too. I mean, the first thing that pops into my mind when I get a good whiff of this is pizza sauce. Yeah, ragu pizza sauce. Mm -hmm. Now, Mott's. Mott's is in collaboration with Anheuser-Busch InBev on this product, and Mott's makes a whole lot of stuff. And one thing they make 
from mixed drinks is a product called uh, Roses Grenadine, and they make another one, Roses Lime. Lime, yeah. Yeah, and people use that for mixed drinks. So if you get if you get roses, you look carefully on the label. It says Mott's. And of course, Clamato is almost universally used for mixed drinks. But then they make juice that you can buy, packaged juice, just to drink. Well, anybody want to say anything about the flavor? I'm just, I'm just uh, almost regretting that I ate those salty potato chips two and a half <laughs> hours ago because this is pretty darn salty. Yeah, I'm. I'm I almost have a little bit less, like, like just like mentioned earlier with the beer, and it is definitely a little beer, so it's expected for it to be beer forward flavor. But yeah, I'm getting more of the tomato juice. Um, for some reason, to me, it's not as salty as um, maybe last ones, or even the Modelo one, just like Bill and I were chatting about earlier. Huh. But, but I do get the salt, I get that tomato juice. But the body is a little bit more watery to me. Yeah. A lot of people were put off from doing this examination with these chiladas because when they found that it had clam broth in it, they just said, oh, they're thinking it's going to be like a seafood gruel. But if they do have a seafood aspect, it's so minimal, don't you think? Yeah, it's almost... I it's, it's, almost it, it's almost just not even there. I, I don't even taste it, really. No. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. Uh, I, I, you know, I, I was kind of like apprehensive uh, at, at first, even drinking these. But I'm with you, Ronald. I mean, I, I think they're kind of tasty now. <laughs> yeah. I'm just standing up because I got tired of sitting and kneeling. Hey, uh, it finishes pretty crisp, like a Budweiser. I mean, the body's pretty light. Um, it, now I know Jose drinks them a lot more than me, but I, I think I could, and I won't, I don't believe, but I could, you know, become a regular chilada drinker. I could, cause it's got everything I like, beer, tomato juice. We live along the Gulf coast. So yeah, we eat a lot of seafood. We like salty food. Now I'm not saying this thing is healthy to drink. Okay. But I'm just saying it has a lot of things that I enjoy. But that's just an opinion. As far as quality, I think it is made with some pretty good quality. Um, one of the beer video reviewers, Dave, Dr. Dave, he made some <laughs> comments on Facebook. He said, what's, what's the, he says something like, what's the goal of your examination tonight? Not to vomit? And I said, well, <laughs> I didn't say anything, you know, but. That is, I think that is the viewpoint of a lot of people if they've not tried these. But yeah, and it's 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 one of those as well where the name itself, clam, 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 clam. You know, do you really want to drink something that has potential clam bits and clam parts and clam broth and it's but it's but it's it's not even forward. You know, it's just. It's almost kind of just a technicality because they they did that makes a product that's called clamato that in retrospect does have clam broth, but it's not the it's, the it's not the promotion that they're pushing, you know. But people look into it and they dive in and they're just like, "Well, why am I going to drink this? It has clam broth and clam broth and beer." Yeah, yeah. It's just I was watching an old video. From uh, Jefferson Airplane, and uh, they were introducing a song called Won't You Try, and Grace Slick said, hey, just try it. If you don't like it, then don't do it again. <laughs> and I don't know what she was talking about, but it's kind of like it reminded me of this beer. Try it, and if you don't like it, you don't have to do it any anymore. But I think if I, I, I bet you half the people that would try it would like it. Well, that's just a guess. What do you? Any other comments, William? Uh, to me, this has a less intense flavor than the Bud version. I would say maybe three quarters of the way there. This would actually remind me kind of the Modelo, a little milder overall flavor. 
but it's it's fine. You know, it's it's not offensive. I could drink this. You know, like uh, one thing that I think is really good with this is like cheese puffs. If you can't get a grilled cheese sandwiches, uh, I have these right here. Golden Flake cheese puffs from Birmingham, Alabama. I was just about to say Birmingham. Yeah. Uh, the taste, of, the taste of the bear. South. The taste of the South. What? At one time, their spokesperson was the great Paul Bear Bryant. He was actually promoting these these this brand, and these are distributed in North Carolina. I found these at a Piggly Wiggly store, and I finished the uh, the last one, the Bud version, with these after you got off air, and it was a really it was great. The cheese, you know, the spice and the tomato, the uh, the, the beer. I thought it was a, a real excellent combination yeah and i think what we're drinking tonight would pair well with fried eggs some uh maybe some grilled or fried sausage or bacon with some grits and uh or even you could put a hunk of people say oh no not hog head cheese again <laughs> yeah that's all i talk about and a hunk of hog head cheese in it maybe okay. instead of the bacon or the or the ham i just think it would it would you you could do this with breakfast food now. With some boudin. <laughs> yes. I think it would go well with boudin. And um, now you make me want to go buy some. <laughs> or, well, we could talk about food pairings. I think it would go well with fried catfish with some, uh, like, cheese french fries or something i don't know black pepper and some hot sauce i don't know I, I i i like to do beer pairings with food i think beer is so amenable to to eat and food you know and some people have said i my my video reviews aren't very good because i i do video reviews with food too much but um, other commentators said 99 out of 100 people in the world drink beer with food <laughs> so it depends how you want to look at it. but anyway i think this is a quality product and i would definitely buy it again but that's my final word on it i'm going to go get the rest of it or some more of it if y'all have anything to say feel free to speak i think if, if i had to decide just based on the past two that we've had three three with tonight i would prefer the budweiser one myself it just has a little bit more bolder beer flavor that doesn't just get drowned out with the tomato, uh, and clamato. Yeah. So the Modelo Chilada one had had for some reason it had this almost artificial flavor to it. Like yeah, they added a bit. So I would prefer the Budweiser. Like this one again. Oh yeah, like I said, I I drink these regularly. So you know, I usually get one in one. I get a Budweiser one, and then I'll get the Bud Light one. Yeah, and let me. Oh, I like so you get a lot with, yeah, I get one and one, and I like to eat them with uh, some saltless crackers. Mm, good idea, saltless. Hey, because you didn't you not overload it with salt a salt attack? Do you notice a little lime flavor? I was noticing that before I got the can out. I'm picking up a little bit of that lime flavor. I'm getting a little bit more lime zest. You know, I don't yeah. get too much of the citrus flavor, but the lime zest essence I'm getting. I like what they say on here. Enjoy the best of two worlds, a refreshing Bud Light, and the unique flavor of Clam Mato. And I agree, it is unique. Drink a red one. They're calling this nickname, they, they nicknamed this beer the red one. Ready to go or use your favorite ingredients to make it yours, whatever, whenever. And if you look on the Bud Light website, they've got little mix drink ideas with this. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Um, <laughs> Uh, let's see. The date of mine was 325th day of 2016, 325 of 2016. So that's pretty fresh, isn't it? That's very fresh. That's a good one. I think the day is 349. We have 18 days left in here counting today. So that's a fresh one. I would, uh, I would also pick the regular version, the Budweiser, over this one. To me, the calorie difference was not that it was 186 versus 151. Not if you count good. calories, you can save a lot more calories on other things than this. You know, for anybody that was 
you know, even considering that, but I just like the little bolder flavor of the regular Budweiser version than this one. But it's just fine. But I'm saying 151 is not exactly a light beer. You know, I think they're trading off the Bud Light name by putting that on this product. Some people will definitely maybe grab it because it says Bud Light and they won't read the label or they won't check in the calorie content of it. You know, sort of a impulse decision. But I would grab the regular Budweiser one first. It, yeah, because it's a good trade-off. You're getting a lot. You're getting a, a fairly good amount more flavor and body, and you're only going up a bit with calories. Yeah, like I'm saying, you could if you're concerned about calories, you can shave the calories off much easier. Uh, other things than this, that's a thirty only thirty-five different difference in calories. I mean, that's not much. You can cut back somewhere else much easier than that. <clears throat> um. Oh, it's strange because I have a train going by my house at the same exact time as someone else. It's my house. I have a train here. It's probably going that way towards you, man. <laughs> it might be the Kansas City Southern because we get a lot of Kansas City Southern trains from that Los Angeles train yard uh, with a lot of graffiti on them, I might add. Uh, but then I get to see all the... Uh, the uh, note, the call outs. I get to see all the call outs um, from various um, social groups that spray paint trains in Los Angeles. <laughs> Next week, we have a very interesting product Tecate Michelada Diablo. And I think Michelada Diablo is the same as the original Tecate Dia uh, Michelada. I think they just added the name Diablo when they started selling it in the USA last year. When I bought it in Mexico two years ago, it was simply called Tecate Michelada. I think they added Diablo to make it seem more, um, I don't know, marketable or something. I'll show you the can. And then in two weeks, no, I retract that. Because in, a, in two weeks, we're gonna do the Milwaukee's Best Light I mean, Milwaukee's Best Lager, the new re, revamped, reformulated Milwaukee's Best. It's got higher alcohol. I figured by that time, everybody should be able to get it. In three weeks, we're looking at Budweiser Clamato Chilada Picante. Spicy means, version. Yeah, the hot one. If you want to call, if, if one should call that hot, I don't. And then, rounding it out, we've got Bud Light Chilada E Limon with the lime, the extra limed up version, which is quite interesting. And then Jose had an idea, December 18th, make your own chilada. <laughs> um, Build a chilada event. I think that'll be fun. Um, let me go get that can of that michelada. I think I think it would be a little fun because now we have an idea of what, you know, the, the chilada beer is. The, a little balance of the beer, their flavor. You can choose your best light lager that you like. You don't choose whether it's um, Clamato or canned, whatever the case is. Mix that all together. Add your celery. Add whatever you want to add. And we can share. We can share what we've done. What, what we, right. What and, we like Ted, and like Ted Nugent said, it's a free-for-all. I don't care. You can get a stout if you want to and do it. That's it. I think it'd be crazy, but you can you can come on here on live on the internet and take a Guinness foreign extra stout and make a chill out of. But I wouldn't advise doing that. But it might be interesting. Um, here's the Mich Michelob Diablo for two reasons. I, I stuck this in there to kind of mix it up a little bit instead of keep doing Budweiser, Budweiser, Budweiser. And I, I saw it at a store for a cheap price. <laughs> Not to mention that it says best by August 2017. <laughs> so now is that a long best by date or what? Ooh. Saw that salt. That salt's preserving it. Yeah. Incredible. And this is from Monterey, Mexico. Monterey, Mexico in the state of Nuevo Leon. Well we know what beers to keep in our cellars in case anything. Yeah. <laughs> right. So everybody be on the lookout. Get your mic. Get your Tecate Michelada. And I, I, I could also say that I love Tecate beer. I think it's one of the best Mexican lagers. 
<clears throat> well, I can tell you with certainty that, that I have never seen that in, in Tampa. So that one might be a little bit tough to come by. But you might be shocked mm -hmm. uh, if you go to some – you know where I bought that? <clears throat> I was at one of these – oh, uh, urban – Grocery stores, let's call it, mm -hmm. where they add 10% at the register. It's really kind of like a scam store because they prey on people that don't understand, you know, they're not enumerate. You know what I mean? They don't understand um, how finances work. They, they do their banking at a check cash in place. You know what I mean? So these stores yeah. go into these neighborhoods and they – they, the people say, oh, look how cheap everything is. Yeah, right, but you're paying 10% extra add-on at the register, so it might be a penny cheaper than in any other store. But regardless, and I've tried to explain that to some of these people, and they're like, yeah, but it's cheap. I'm like, do you understand what that means? <laughs> is it one of those places where they, um, they don't scan the product, they hand price it? It's like it, it can be whoever's at the register at that moment. That's even worse. Okay. <laughs> this, this is an actual grocery store. There's one here, and I can get good deals there now, if you know what you're doing. But what I mean is they have these unusual, unusually low prices posted. But then there's a disclaimer at the bottom of the poster. 10% service fee added at checkout. Plus, you're paying 10% sales tax on top of that. So you're not coming out really any better than any other grocery store. But they, they're preying on the fact that a lot of people don't understand, you know, basic economic ideas. So, But regardless, I bought the Michelada there, and it was only like uh, $2.50 for the can, which is cheaper than other places. Even with the service charge add-on, it was still – a few cents cheaper, you know, not anything really remarkable, but it was a little cheaper. And I said, well, it's coming up. I better grab it. I have not seen this one in my area either. I've been paying a little bit more attention to these style beers when I started started these hangouts, and I haven't seen that. I saw the regular Tecate, but I haven't seen that anywhere. It would probably be one I would have to go into the some of the nook and crannies of the – Yeah. I hope you can find it. I hope you can find it because Jose knows he's had it. It is very different from what we've looked at so far. Wouldn't you agree, Jose? Oh yeah, it, it's way different. Um, like I said, the reason is number one, Clamato has that specific flavor. So the Budweiser, you know, plant, uh, uh, joining with Mott's and making that specific Clamato chilada, it's his own. So when you these different brands that don't use a specific Clamato and they use other spices and rather other tomatoes and they're adding uh, peppers, hot peppers to it. it. It definitely has a different everything to it. Yeah. And the first thing I picked up on when I did the, the, the Cate Michelada, now it's Diablo. I said, they're using paprika in this. I know this has to be paprika. Mm -hmm. um, I bought that. But like I said, the first can I bought in Mexico, but like you were talking to me, I had bought also the Sol Clay Chilada in Mexico. I bought the Dos Equis Chilada in Mexico, and I bought uh, – there was one other Sol. So if you go to Mexico, they have all kind of stuff you cannot get here. I mean, you just can't get it. And then I got in trouble at the border, but I got that worked out. Because they, they, the border control service said, no, you're, you're going across the border for some crazy reason. I said, no, I was buying beer. And they said, well, let, let's get this straight. <laughs> you drove from Louisiana to Mexico so that you could buy beer. I said, no. I also drove here for general tourism purposes. Well, that really got them irritated and suspicious so then i had to go and let a dog search me and everything it was a real mess <laughs> should have just showed them your uh, youtube channel i was embarrassed to do that 
But after I got searched the fourth time, I told this guy who was a lieutenant colonel, I said, okay, look, I got this beer channel. And he looked it up on YouTube while he's talking to me, interrogating me, really. And he started laughing. He, he said, ah, oh, you ever heard of Olympia beer? I said, well, of course. And then we got in a conversation about that. And he started typing on his computer. He said, I'm going to fix this up. But believe me, he said, when you come across the border the next time, you're not going to have these problems. But uh, it was a, it was really weird, you know, but at least I got to be, I had never been frisked in my life. So I got to be frisked. And I was a kid. <laughs> I'd never been sniffed. I'd never been sniffed by a drug dog, a drug dog either. So, you know, I was looking at it like, well, I can go back home and tell stories about it. Look on the bright side, right, bro? <laughs> yeah, because when I first got stopped, I figured the less I say, the better off I'll be. So I just didn't say anything. And, and they were just asking me pointed questions, and I gave honest answers. And they wanted to know what was on my camera, and I showed them. And they, get, they were really yelling at me and uh, sort of fussing and lecturing me about why I should not be going to Mexico. It's very dangerous. Um, they have kidnappers and, and, and why am I doing this? And I told the lady, I said, I was walking all around. I didn't have any problems. I went to the grocery store and everything. I don't even, I said, I did find it was strange that they had all these soldiers hiding behind a wall. But um, yeah, I mean, I'm walking and there's this big wall and all these guys with guns automatic rifles and helmets on they're they're like behind the wall and i'm just walking with my little shopping bag say hello let me go see what's in this store and i did find some things too by the way so it's like a bizarre experience but anyway i'm just bringing it up for because it happened but anyway um i hope y'all i hope y'all <laughs> i hope y'all can find that mr lotta but i have a feeling you, if if that fails it might just be me and jose but you could find the bud light uh picante and 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 extra lime i'm pretty sure you'll find those two i saw the picante besides the one i bought this one they have all the bud products so i, I can get that one easily the picante are there any like internet resources where we could search like maybe where where these might be okay i don't know but i will give you some advice that i have used in the past and it worked out <laughs> Sorry, I'm burping because of the carbonation. I would find out who is my local Anheuser-Busch distributor, which should be very easy to find because Anheuser-Busch on their website has a list of every distributor in America with their websites. You can link to it and it'll bring it up. I, 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 I just call them. I call them on the phone and say, uh, yeah, I'm calling about a product. They'll type it in. They'll tell me exactly which stores have it and in what configuration. I've had this experience many times with these distributors. They're extremely helpful. One time I was looking for a, a, a product Anheuser-Busch makes called Hurricane. The lady says, Hurricane, okay. She said, there's two stores you can find it. And, and she's telling me, go to this store in Lacombe, Louisiana, and you're going to find it in single 40-ounce glass bottles. Absolutely, she was correct. So that would be your best option. Call the distributor. They'll know. Is, is, is Ticante an Anheuser-Busch uh, distributor product? No, I was just using that as an example. You'll have to call your local uh, Ticante distributor, which is probably going to be whoever handles Heineken, because Heineken owns Ticante. But I, I, I would say that that should be very easy to find. If you looked in the yellow pages, you're only going to find about three distributors who will probably service the entire Tampa area. Many times, if you see in a supermarket on the tag, they will it will tell you who the distributor is, like in a supermarket. If you can just find any Takate product, you might be able to see on that tag who the distributor is. Okay. All right. Or that simply or that simply helped me out a few times. Right. William's right. Or you could simply ask the store manager. And they'll be glad to tell you. In fact, the store manager might call them for you. They'll do those kind of things. That people don't realize that until they ask. It's amazing what you can get sometimes just by asking. 
Yeah, and William had an option enough to ask. Yeah, and William has had those same experiences where beer companies have pinpointed where he needs to go exactly to find these odd legacy brands. It's, uh, they haven't failed me yet. Every time they say it's going to be there, it can, like I said, it can be out in the boondocks. It'll be there. <laughs> It'll be there. It's, uh, <laughs> so it's, you know, it's good to get some customer service sometimes, and I've been well pleased with the way they've helped me out. Especially with PAPS. PAPS, yeah, I have to give them high, high praise for that that's why i sort of root for their brands to stay in survival you know the all the lacy brands because you know if it wasn't for them they probably wouldn't be around they may be limited distribution but they're still around and they are available so you know i'm i'm, I'm i hope they do well yeah i agree with that and i my experience with paps for the last um oh 17 years at least 17 years has been 100 percent positive i mean these people will contact you they will call you back they will send you emails within minutes and they will tell you everything you need you need to know so it's uh really something else and as a bush though and miller and cores they've also been very good and other you know craft beer companies have also been very good too so i can't really uh not mention the others, but I'm just saying PAPS seems to be a little more uh, engaged, maybe, is a good word. Interesting. So anyway, um, that's it. I guess we've uh, exhausted it. I'm finishing mine up. And uh, heck, I wish it was next Wednesday night now, because I'd be cracking open that can of Tecate, but anyway, you know. <laughs> <laughs> And uh, I, I'm going to say one more thing on air. I don't know how you feel about this, the brew dude, Jose, but I I bought a bottle, and I'd never seen it before in a store in my life. I bought a bottle of brandy yesterday, and it's from California, and it was covered, caked with dust, but I went home and washed it off, and I looked it up, and it's uh, I said, oh. Maybe somebody would want to do an online examination, an on-air examination of that. Uh, but um, it's from a company called Corbell, and uh, I, I thought it was interesting. It's a, it's a brandy, no brandy. It's a brandy from Corbell. It's called Corbell XS, and they had an extremely detailed sales sheet on their website, a PDF file. I mean, they go into great detail. So that was impressive, and um, I had to pay five dollars for the little bottle. But I, I said I may never see this again in my life. And when I when I get those kind of things, I buy them, you know, because I've had so many bad experiences in the past where I passed on something, and I never saw it again ever. I can get it at my. I just looked it up. I can get it at my Total Wine, which is my local. Uh, I mean, it's like a beer outlet, beer, wine, and liquor outlet. Yeah. Uh, I just saw it right now. I get my I get a 750 ml for uh, about 12 bucks. Talking about the XS? Yes, the Corbell XS brandy. It's a black label with like a red uh, a red kind of stripe on it. So it's Corbell right in the front. Kind of has an X and an S on the front. Yep, yeah, that's the one. It's yeah. kind of a newer one. I just want to let you know there's a child sneaking up behind you as you. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's my son. <laughs> well. Um, We'll, we'll talk about that off air if you're interested, uh, but I have it in the cabinet and um, I've never had any product from Corbell. But that was a German immigrant. Uh, uh, Corbell was a man from, uh, from uh, actually uh, Bohemia, the Czech Republic, and he immigrated to California. So that's an interesting story there. Just like uh, the Anheuser and the Bush families were also immigrants from the German Confederation. So kind of all works together in a way. Well, I sure do appreciate you guys joining me. It, it, it's so much fun to do this, in my opinion. Been an eye-opening experience for me. I, 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 I like these. I'm a, I'm a buyer now. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. See, we're waking up people to, we're waking people up to trying new things. And, um, Jose, is is the 
can you get out there in LA? Can you get these chiladas in like twelve ounce cans? Can you get them in like a twelve pack or something? You know, I haven't I haven't seen them. I've only seen the twenty uh, twenty two ounce or what is it? Twenty five ounce. The twenty five. So when ounces. when you buy, that's what you buy all the time. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Bill, we get them in six packs here. Do you really? Six packs of your typical size cans. Yes, sir. Six 12-ounce cans. That is correct. Interesting. Huh. Very common. Very common. And in fact, I'll bet you go in any store around here and they'll have them. It's just run of the mill. So there's a market for here because it's they if it didn't sell, believe me, it wouldn't be in the store. They get rid of stuff if that if it doesn't sell. Sure, no doubt. Yeah. So I actually I looked it up right now at my total wine store and um I'm getting the 12 pack of eight ounce cans. Ah, eight ounce. Eight ounces. The little ponies. Yep. Yeah. A 12 pack. A 12 pack of the ponies. Yeah, that's the Bud Light Arita. Uh, configuration which I'm not I, look folks I'm not doing our, the arenas I'm sorry I, there's, there's, there's limits even beyond which I can't be pushed I did a review on one of them and I found that you had to add a lot of ice a lot of ice to yeah, either try, just, to must, try to get I one just, down yeah I can't I don't mind stuff that's bad Per se, I just can't stand stuff that's so sickeningly sweet. Mm -hmm. You know that Kool Aid type. Oh man, I can't deal with that. I'm sorry, can't do it. All right, well, so long, folks. <laughs>